Chapter 141, Ouyang Lulu was shocked. A trace of a smile was revealed on Gu Xiaoxue's face. In a flash, the image of her iceberg beauty collapsed as it was replaced by the gentle bearing of a beauty that could topple a nation. Ouyang Lulu is a rich woman and she also has. What she dislikes the most is to take a ride on someone else's vehicle and spend money to take public passenger planes. If my guess is correct, since she drives her own car, that means that she has taken her own private jet in coming here from Jingmen Island. Tang Xiao stared blankly and said, she must have taken her own car? Today, she gave me a ride and acted as my driver with her own car, didn't she? Gu Xiaoxue hurriedly said, no, it's not. Her car has a license plate, but not that temporary license plate one. What she took today was only her temporary car. Tang Xiao said with a surprised expression, you noticed it? With a shallow smile, Gu Xiaoxue said, my observation skill has always been good. Because she had determined Tang Xiao's identity, she was quite a bit closer to Tang Xiao. Gu Yan, um, adopted her since she was a child, brought her up, educated her, and instilled the concept of respecting and honoring her master deep inside her innermost soul. She knew that Tang Xiao adopted her master. If there was no Tang Xiao, her master would not exist, and without her, she would not exist today. Tang Xiao took his mobile and dialed Ouyang Lulu's number. What is it? Ouyang Lulu's unhappy voice came out of the phone. Tang Xiao felt quite awkward. Somehow he felt like he was a man who only called someone in a time of need, and threw them out when he did not need them. Therefore, his attitude now was much friendlier than before. With a particularly gentle tone, he said, Lulu, I want to ask you something. How is it going with your matter in Star City? Lulu? On that side, the anger on Ouyang Lulu's face instantly froze. It was the first time Tang Xiao called her like this. With eyes full of disbelief, she held the phone and asked, What kind of damn wacky plot do you have now? I will tell you, this lady absolutely won't work as your driver again. She did bite this or driver word heavily. Tang Xiao said with a laugh, I do have something that needs your help. If you can help me, then you'll be my friend afterward. Really? Ouyang Lulu replied with a surprised tone. With an assuring tone, Tang Xiao gave his guarantee, it's true. Just like real gold. Ouyang Lulu happily said, then do say. What do you want my help for? Tang Xiao said with a laugh, actually, it's no big deal. I have an urgent matter and need to go to Jingmen Island. But the airport's last flight has already left today. I heard from Gu Xiaoxue that you have your own private jet. I want to borrow your private jet to Jingmen Island. How about it? Can you help me? Xiao Xue? You call her that intimate? No, I won't help you. A trace of sorrow and grief surfaced on Ouyang Lulu's heart as she pretended to yell out a resentful tone. After having realized that her mind was not on the right track, she promptly added, But if you tell me something nice and pleasant to hear, I'll immediately rush to the airport and take you to Jingmen Island right away. How about it? Tang Xiao blinked. His mind was full of confusion. Was this girl mental? She wanted him to say something nice to her? Wasn't she called Ouyang Lulu? He called her Lulu once and she already became this intimate. Just because it was pleasant to hear. He must say something that pleasant to hear. Ouyang Lulu said that I must say something nice to hear. What should I tell her? Tang Xiao turned to look at Gu Xiaoxue as he asked with a puzzled expression. In fact, Gu Xiaoxue could hear the contents of Tang Xiao and Ouyang Lulu's conversation. Upon seeing that confused expression in Tang Xiao's eyes, she turned supercilious inside. She did not know whether Tang Xiao was silly or faking it. Ouyang Lulu was a young lady, her temper had come up and she deliberately teased him, but he actually could not realize it. However, Ouyang Lulu usually was a proud princess as she had always been. 
how could she create such difficulties for the Grand Master this time? Was it because Grand Master had made her his driver and that made her unhappy? Gu Xiaoxue's mind went blank. For quite a long time she thought, before she replied with a low voice, Grand Master, praise her saying she's beautiful and has a good bearing. Tell her that everyone loves her just like seeing a blooming flower. Ugh. With a strange expression, Tang Xiao looked at Gu Xiaoxue and said on the phone according to her suggestion, Lulu, you are one of a kind beauty and very beautiful, you have a good bearing, and everyone loves you just like seeing a blooming flower to behold. You, you have a Buddha's heart. Now you can take us to Jingmen Island, right? At the other side. Gu Xiaoxue could only admire her grand master. She had never thought that Tang Xiao would exactly copy-paste the words she had just taught him. Couldn't he come up with something new and said something better to hear? She knew perfectly well about Ouyang Lulu's character. She believed that Ouyang Lulu definitely would not be satisfied with hearing such words, perhaps would even continue to make things difficult for Tang Xiao. At the other side, Ouyang Lulu's angry expression finally disappeared thoroughly. With a grin out of joy, she spoke through the phone, consider that done. Since this great aunt of yours feels happy now, I'll help you once this time, albeit reluctantly. Do bear in mind that you are this Ouyang Lulu's friend later. A kind of friend who you can never keep any secrets from and are able to tell me everything, yes? All right. Tang Xiao's reply was simple and clear. Ouyang Lulu said, now wait at the airport. I'll immediately catch up. Tang Xiao put away the phone as he looked at Gu Xiaoxue and said, Ouyang Lulu is immediately catching up. Let's wait for her here. A short circuit happened inside Gu Xiaoxue's brain. With an inconceivable expression, she looked at Tang Xiao. Even as she racked her brain, she could not figure out as to why Ouyang Lulu such a proud and arrogant princess could forgive Tang Xiao that easily. She even complied and promised so happily. She suddenly felt that she had entered some kind of illusion. What kind of magic did her grandmaster cast over Ouyang Lulu? Half an hour later, Ouyang Lulu, with her black leather boots, stepped forward and rushed. She was wearing shiny black leather clothing, even her cloak was also black. Tang Xiao looked at Gu Xiaoxue who was in full white attire and then at Ouyang Lulu who was in a full black one. Despite everything that he had no potential of becoming such of a prodigal son, he still felt that the present scene was bright, giving off a brave and stunning feeling. Do I look good? Ouyang Lulu let out a gentle smile and turned around in a circle in front of Tang Xiao. Her black windproof cloak was fluttering. She looked very cool and graceful giving off some kind of a natural wild and vigorous feeling that added to her charm. You look great. At the moment, Tang Xiao did not say something against his feeling as he nodded and answered sincerely. Ouyang Lulu smiled with satisfaction. Then, she immediately walked toward Gu Xiaoxue's side and held her arm intimately, Xiaoxue, have you finished discussing your things? Mmm. Gu Xiaoxue gave a slight nod. Ouyang Lulu said with a laugh, tell me if Tang Xiao dares to bully you. Although this guy usually acts like an annoying arrogant chap, he's warm-hearted. But since I've become one of his circle of people, I have plenty of means to straighten him up. Gu Xiaoxue quickly said, Lulu, don't say that to the Grand Master. You're what? Ouyang Lulu's expression turned blank as she rubbed her ears hard. Was that a hearing hallucination? Yes. It must be, she only heard things. Ouyang Lulu said, Xiao Xue, Tang Xiao is really a good bully. As long as you have something wrong with him, you can tell me. I can make him beg for mercy. Gu Xiao Xue glanced at Tang Xiao as she said with desperation, Lulu, Grand Master is broad minded. He's really good to others. You cannot speak like that again later. Or else, else I'll be angry with you. With a shocked expression, Ouyang Lulu pointed at Tang Xiao and exclaimed, Why why you, what did you call Tang Xiao? 
Did you call him Grand Master? Did I not hear you wrong? You really called him Grand Master? H H E. H H. How could he inexplicably become your Grand Master? Gu Xiaoxuan nodded and said seriously, "He's really my Grand Master. My master's master." Lulu, if you wanna still be friends with me, you must respect my Grand Master. Ouyang Lulu was stunned by Gu Xiaoxuan's words. Never once had she ever dreamt that Tang Xiao would be Gu Xiaoxuan's Grand Master, even her master's master. How old was Tang Xiao? Gu Xiaoxue was brought up by her master. Her master's age was at least twice her age, wasn't it? A forty-year-old woman actually called Tang Xiao as master. This, since Gu Xiaoxue did not explain further, Tang Xiao naturally would not explain. They remained silent whilst watching Ouyang Lulu's shocked expression. Xiaoxue, you haven't answered my question. After quite a long time, only then did Ouyang Lulu shake Gu Xiaoxue's arm and ask, "I can't answer this question." She said and continued, "Except, I hope you won't tell this matter to another's ears, even if it's your family." Only now did Ouyang Lulu realize that there were too many secrets between Gu Xiaoxue and Tang Xiao. She was struck by torrents of curiosity that was scratching her heart and strongly sparked her interest. However, she forcefully suppressed it due to Gu Xiaoxue's words. After having been silent for a long time, only then did she slowly nodded. I promise that I'll bury this matter deep inside my heart. Tang Xiao then said, "Let's go now. I'm really in a hurry." Ouyang Lulu looked at him deeply. The more she knew him, the more she felt that she could not see through him. For her, Tang Xiao sent out a strong magnetic force, and her interest on him became more intense, and she became more deeply attracted to him, causing her to want to reveal all layers of fog that shrouded Tang Xiao. At Star City Airport, Ouyang Lulu led Tang Xiao and Gu Xiaoxue and passed through the VIP passage. As the airport's personnel drove a car and took them to the airport apron, a small silver-colored private jet then appeared in front of Tang Xiao. It had a streamlined body with red lines that formed a gorgeous pattern of a peony. Its pair of wings opened as though it was a big bird on the ground. Boss, a man with a mature aura exuded from his body, held a stack of documents and waited under the ladder. Ouyang Lulu asked. Have you applied the taking off procedures to the airport management? He respectfully replied, "I've submitted the application. They have given the approval. We can take off in 15 minutes." The pilot and stewardesses have been waiting in the cabin. Good. Ouyang Lulu replied and led Tang Xiao to board the ladder. The interior was luxurious, with a soft carpet, spacious leather sofa, and upscale furniture. Despite his ignorance for the value of this private jet, however, not only Tang Xiao secretly praised it, he also could see that it was absolutely luxurious by looking from the interior. What do you think? Is my private jet good enough? With a slight proud expression hung on her face, Ouyang Lulu swept over toward Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao replied with a light reply, "It's not bad." In his eyes, a, a not bad evaluation was already a hard to come by evaluation, and Ouyang Lulu did not understand such a disposition he had. However, Gu Xiaoxue was crystal clear about it. Tang Xiao, after all, was but a supreme in the immortal world. He was above hundreds of millions of people and strong and powerful people at that. What kind of luxurious scenes had he yet to see? Chapter One Forty Two. At the bottom of the ocean, Ouyang Lulu rolled her eyes at Tang Xiao as she heard his comment. Then she took Gu Xiaoxue to enter her private jet with full enthusiasm. The interior of this private jet didn't only have a reception room, but also a bedroom, kitchen, restroom, cloakroom, and even a luxurious bathing room. Gu Xiaoxue had always kept her indifferent and light appearance despite seeing the luxurious cabin. Not even the slightest swings nor disturbed mood could be seen from her. 
It's just that she occasionally glanced at Tang Xiao with a reverent and odd expression in her eyes. In fact, it was not only Ouyang Lulu who was full of curiosity toward Tang Xiao, even Gu Xiaoxue was also the same. She really wanted to know as to how a supreme who once stood aloof on the summit, above myriads of races and powerful celestial beings in the immortal world would react? What kind of differences would such a person have, compared with ordinary people? At Jingmen Island Airport It was already noon when the silver-colored private jet landed on the airport apron. The three of them went out of the airport as a big middle-aged man with a grim look then came over to greet them. Little boss. Gu Xiaoxue slightly nodded and pointed at Tang Xiao, Uncle An, Uncle Ao, he's Tang Xiao. From now on he will be the master of Everlasting Feast Hall. Treat him just like you treat my master. Do you understand? Mr. Tang? Both Mo An and Mo Ao looked at Tang Xiao with astonishment. They knew Tang Xiao, since he, after all, could be said to have created a huge sensation in the Everlasting Feast Hall a few days ago. They had a very deep reverence toward him. And now, although they did not understand upon hearing their little boss's remarks, they still chose to be obedient and spoke in unison with a respectful manner, big boss. Tang Xiao turned toward Gu Xiaoxue as he frowned and said, What do you mean by this? You are my grand master. This is what master previously told me. I only carried out what master had instructed me to do. Tang Xiao let out a helpless, forced smile. He looked at Mo An and Mo Ao and nodded to the two brothers even though he did not say anything. Mo An respectfully said, Big boss, little boss, the car is ready. Do we go back to the Everlasting Feast Hall, or? Gu Xiaoxue said, let's return to the Everlasting Feast Hall. Ouyang Lulu looked at her and then looked at Tang Xiao. Although she really wanted to go with them to the Everlasting Feast Hall, but she realized that they must have some important things to do. Perhaps it would be inappropriate if she followed them there. After hesitating a bit, only then did she suppress the curiosity inside her heart. Anyway, I'll go back to the Paradise Club. Gu Xiaoxue nodded and said, If you have the time, come look for me at the Everlasting Feast Hall. All right. Ouyang Lulu quickly complied. She stood still on her spot, watching Tang Xiao and Gu Xiaoxue's backs as a helpless feeling arose in her heart. Before, she solemnly vowed that she would never become Tang Xiao's coachwoman again. But with some words of praises from Tang Xiao, she found herself turning silly and becoming his coachwoman for a second time. At Everlasting Feast Hall After the two cars had entered the parking lot, Tang Xiao, along with Gu Xiaoxue, walked side by side toward a distant Sikkim pathway. He could see that the direction in front was leading to the interior coastline of the sea. At the beach. Gu Xiaoxue untied the rope and boarded a small boat. Tang Xiao followed her, and after boarding it, he asked with a confused expression, We must go to the sea? Is Yen, um, in the sea? Gu Xiaoxue nodded and replied, Grand Master, please come with me, you'll find it out clearly later. The small boat had no paddle, but when the two stood above it, it moved automatically even though there was no wind. It slowly went toward the sea, and then stopped in the middle of the sea after having traversed a kilometer. Gu Xiaoxue lightly tipped her toe as her perfect and delicate figure floated midair up high, ten meters away from the sea surface. Along with the wave of both of her arms, a powerful line of qi created a pathway. Ah! Uh. An array pattern? Tang Xiao's complexion moved as he spontaneously released his spiritual sense. Whiz. The sea surface was as though being split open by a sword as the seawater spread to the sides. Observing with his spiritual sense, Tang Xiao could see the fluctuation of an array pattern transmitted outward from the bottom of the sea. Heaven Earth Jade Ocean Array. Tang Xiao sighed and lamented. He had this Heaven Earth Jade Ocean Array in his library pavilion before. Gu Xiaoxue floated down as she stood side by side with Tang Xiao. 
An excited expression flashed on her face when she spoke respectfully, Grand Master, this is precisely the Heaven Earth Jadeite Ocean Array that Master has arranged. And Master is 100 meters at the bottom of the sea. Please come along with me. All right. Tang Xiao followed behind her and jumped down to the seawater toward the channel pathways. 100 meters at the bottom of the sea. An exquisite pagoda, with a height of more than 10 meters, exuded a shining and lustering light as the spiritual qi influx. From all directions of the seafloor was as though the tides that overflowed toward its interior. With only a glance, Tang Xiao could recognize that this was a magical device he had granted to Gu Yen. Um. In the past, it could be used to attack and also to guard the treasures of the immortal world. Gu Xiaoxue stopped in front of the pagoda's door as she turned to look at Tang Xiao and said, Grand Master, you are the one who granted this magical device to Master. You should know the method to open this pagoda's door. In that case, you can open it. Tang Xiao nodded. His fingers pinched the lotus flower engraving and shouted in a low voice. Of the heaven and earth profound emperors, only I alone am the sole revered sovereign. However, the pagoda's door did not even produce the slightest sounds or movements after Tang Xiao's voice had fallen. Tang Xiao stared blankly as he only revealed a forced smile expression afterward. He shook his head and said, I've lost my magical power. My strength is far inferior than it used to be, so I can't open the door of this pagoda with the normal method. After having said that, he went to the wall next to the pagoda's door as his fingers pinched the golden dragon carving on the wall, in an orderly beating for nine times. Suddenly, the previously unmoved pagoda door slowly opened. This is... Gu Xiaoxue looked at Tang Xiao's method with a surprised expression. She did not have any doubts for Tang Xiao's identity, but she did have a slight intention to test Tang Xiao when she asked him to open the exquisite pagoda's door. Besides, as people say, it was better to personally prove it. When Tang Xiao chanted the mnemonic chants, she perfectly knew that Tang Xiao's identity had been verified. But, what made her secretly surprised was that she did not know the other method Tang Xiao had shown her. Grand Master, how did you do that? Tang Xiao said with a smile, I'm the one who gave this exquisite pagoda to Yen. Um. In the past. Naturally, I have other means to open it, and Yen. Um. Also knows about it. Gu Xiaoxue suddenly understood. With eyes filled with respect, she said, Grand Master, let's go inside. Master, she, she's in the inside. Tang Xiao nodded and stepped through the pagoda's door. Huh? In the split second he entered, Tang Xiao felt a piercing cold bite from the air. The temperature inside the pagoda was ten times colder than the outside world. Despite also being a cultivator, he was still unable to endure it and could not help but tremble. Who is it? A voice full of vicissitude echoed inside the pagoda. An old woman in a golden cloak with a dragon figurehead walking stick instantly appeared in front of Tang Xiao. Elder Ji, don't be rude. Gu Xiaoxue floated forward and spoke with a solemn tone. The old woman's expression slightly changed. She faced Gu Xiaoxue and nodded as she spoke in a sinking tone, Young master, master has once said that aside from you, nobody can enter this exquisite pagoda. But you come with an outsider this time, what's your purpose? Gu Xiaoxue pointed at Tang Xiao and said, He's the person master has always been looking for. What? The old woman's pupil contracted violently as she looked at Tang Xiao with an overwhelmingly shocked expression. Tang Xiao observed her a few times and said with an indifferent tone, The Mesmer clan's bloodline dares to act unbridled in front of this venerable? If I remember correctly, if this Anata did not act to protect your clan in the past, the entire Mesmer clan would have been completely massacred by Qian Yenshin monarch without any one of you left. Puff, puff. The old woman's body trembled and directly knelt in front of Tang Xiao. Just like Tang Xiao had said, 
If it were not because the fortunate coincidence that he encountered the massacre toward the Mesmer clan and helped to protect them, perhaps the Mesmer clan's name would have been removed from the immortal world. Not even a soul on earth aside from her master Gu Yen, um, knew about this matter. Ji Chime pays the respects to Venerable Lord. Tang Xiao spoke indifferently, stand up. Your injury is very serious. If you are not treated promptly, perhaps you won't last for more than a few years. Ji Chime replied with a bitter expression, this junior knows. But Earth is scarce of resources and it doesn't have any panacea to take. To last until the present is already a huge blessing for this one. Young Master is really capable of being able to find the Venerable Lord. If Master is awake, she certainly will be very happy. Wake up? Tang Xiao's brows slightly pressed as he asked with a sinking tone, How is Yen? Um, now. This? Ji Chime's complexion slightly changed. She lowered her head and did not dare to speak even a word. With a bit of bitter and pained expression, Gu Xiaoxue said, Grand Master, Master's state of injury is much more serious than Elder Ji's. She has lost consciousness for numerous times in the past ten years. Even if she is to waken, at the most, she can only hold up for half a day before she loses consciousness again. The Twilight Nightmare? Tang Xiao recalled the time when Gu Xiaoxue said about it. His heart was struck with an earthquake and immediately dashed forward toward the stairs without hesitation. The exquisite pagoda had a total of seven floors. Apart from the first layer, which functioned as a vault to store a lot of refining materials, the remaining six floors were completely empty. Tang Xiao's speed was extremely fast. When he arrived and appeared on the seventh floor, the freezing air in the surroundings was much more severe. His eyes then fell on a jade-like body on the cold ice bed, with white skirt, black hair, and a heart-stirring beautiful face. Her appearance looked like she was in her twenties as she quietly lied on the bed. It's her. After clearly seeing that stunningly beautiful appearance, the trembling and heartbeat that struck Tang Xiao's heart intensified for several folds. Even though Gu Yen, um, s appearance was much different compared to the past, but that familiar appearance was not something he could ever forget even after a number of millenniums. Disciple Tang Xiao came next to the bed of ice. With trembling hands, he gently picked up Gu Yen, um, and carefully hugged her in his arms. Such a familiar face, familiar fragrance, and flavor. Never once in his dreams had he ever expected that he would be able to see the disciple he had brought up again. Scenes of the past reappeared inside his mind. Master, Yen, um, is hungry. Could you pick that green jasper immortal fruit for me, please? Master, Yen, um, has learned the flying butterfly fairy dance, could you please to look at my dance? Master, Yen, um, has broken through a cultivation level, it won't be long before Yen, um, reaches the true immortal realm. By that time, Yen, um, would have the ability to protect you. Master, you bought me a beautiful streamlined fairy gauze which I'm fond of, Yen, um, really likes white clothes. Master, Tang Xiao's eyes turned a bit moist. He gently stroked Gu Yen, um, S face and down to her cheek, after which, he slowly sat on the edge of the ice bed as he looked at Ji Chime and Gu Xiaoxue and asked with a sank tone, Tell me everything. Chapter 143 Being in a Stupor State Ji Chime regarded Tang Xiao as if he was a deity. She respectfully replied after hearing his question, Venerable Lord, only little does the subordinate know about it. What this one knows of is, she has been searching for you for thousands of years with countless hardships. Afterward, Master heard that you've been schemed by others and not even your soul was left. Because she did not believe that, she even rushed through a journey to the ninth heaven and finally became an unofficial disciple of the heavenly emperor Tianji, and learned the star's advancement divination art wholeheartedly. 
After Master had paid an outrageously miserable price, only then was she finally able to divine traces about you. However, because it was not easy to find this place, Master sneaked into Time Island to scheme against the Shade Demon Zhu Wusho and became his successor disciple. She finally obtained the formation chart of the Space Magic Array. Master was done and spent countless efforts and riches before she was finally able to lay down the Space Magic Array. But at that time, the Shade Demon Zhu Wusho found us. He attacked and caused us heavy losses. Master was hit by Zhu Wusho's Twilight Nightmare. A murderous intent flashed from Tang Xiao's eyes. Then he continued to ask with a sinking tone, if I remember correctly, Gu Xiaoxue said that you arrived on Earth a few decades ago. But I have only returned to Earth for a year. How could this happen? Ji Chime replied, Master's comprehension in regards to space-time law has already reached a very profound level. But before we arrived on Earth, Zhu Wusho hit us with his twilight nightmare, which led to the deviation in the perpetual river of time and caused us to arrive on Earth a few decades earlier. The questions in Tang Xiao's heart when he got the answers, dispersed. He finally understood as to why the everlasting feast hall would have the water block dragon pen and the thousand revolution array. It turned out to have been arranged by Gu Yen. Um... She did everything she could and paid such extreme and painful price only to personally come to earth. Tang Xiao's heart was not made of stone. He was emotionally moved, and the surging tides of emotions struck his heart. Having feelings of love and affections made him hate the shade demon Zhu Wusho. He vowed that if one day he returned to the immortal world, then Zhu Wusho had to pay the most miserable price. Standing beside whilst looking at Tang Xiao's appearance, Gu Xiaoxue's heart was filled with all sorts of various feelings. She knew the wishes of her master. She also knew what obsessed her for thousands of years. And now, although her master was still unconscious, but she was hugged by Grand Master in his arms. It made her wonder, could her losing consciousness master feel happy? Yen. Um. When can she wake up? Tang Xiao turned to look at Ji Chime and asked with a deep tone. Ji Chime respectfully replied, the last time Master woke up was three months ago. According to the regular pattern in the past, she should wake up in three months also. Moreover, we are also running out of soul tranquilizer stones, the remaining stones can only maintain Master's condition for two and a half years. If we can't obtain more soul tranquilizer stone within this time window, I'm afraid that master, she. Soul tranquilizer stone? The soul stone to calm down one's abnormal state of mind or soul, and to protect their life? Tang Xiao tightly gripped his fists while a firm glint flashed in his eyes. Not only did he have to think of every possible way to find soul tranquilizer stones, but he must also do everything he could to seek chrono crystal and demonic revival grass. The soul tranquilizer stones were but only a temporary solution as it would not root out the core of the problem. Only after having found those two items or the other ones with the same effects would Gu Yen um, be completely cured. Amongst the two of you, who knows about pill concocting? Gu Xiaoxue and Ji Qimei glanced at each other. Then, Gu Xiaoxue immediately said, only little do I know about it. Master knows about alchemy, and she taught me once in a while. But I can't concoct any pills that are too precious. Ji Chimei said, I can do that. Tang Shou said, I'll stay with Gu Yen. Um. For the rest of today and tonight. Tomorrow, you will accompany me to go back to Star City. I have a blood spiral shell flower that can be used as the main ingredient to concoct a spirit condensation pill. As for the formula to concoct it, I will give it to you. If you need to find other medicinal ingredients, then you think up of every possible way to find them. Spirit Condensation Pill? A surprised and happy expression revealed in Ji Chime's eyes. For thousands of years had she lived in the immortal world, so she naturally knew about the preciousness and effects Spirit Condensation Pill had. If she really was able to concoct this pill, her master's condition could be maintained for three to five years longer. 
Thank you so much, Venerable Lord. Ji Chime bent on her knees and cowed out. Tang Xiao waved and said, We're no longer in the immortal world. From now on, be sure not to bow down and kneel to me in front of others. Besides, I'm no longer the supreme Tang Xiao from the immortal world who was aloof and remote. I'm now but a modern person who has to start over again from the beginning. Well, you can go out now. Yes. Ji Chime and Gu Xiaoxue replied respectfully. The temperature inside this exquisite pagoda was tens of degrees below zero. It was even colder several degrees compared to the cold storage warehouse. However, relying on his exuberant vitality and qi, Tang Xiao resisted it and stayed inside the exquisite pagoda for a whole day and a half. He had never seen her for thousands of years, and he could not bear to leave someone who had paid so much for him. Even though she was not conscious, but Tang Xiao still wanted to accompany her. In the next early morning, Tang Xiao went out of the exquisite pagoda and returned to the seacoast. Then, he saw Gu Xiaoxue and Ji Qimei who stood together as they had already waited for him for a long time. Grand Master, Ouyang Lulu has come. Gu Xiaoxue respectfully said. Tang Xiao lightly said, since she has come, she can save me a lot of trouble. Ji Qimei, do you have an ID card? No. Ji Qimei shook her head and said. Tang Xiao looked at Gu Xiaoxue and said. You help her get an ID card. Having it while we live on Earth will reduce a lot of trouble. Well, take me to see Ouyang Lulu. Grand Master, do you want to make her your coachwoman again? A full smiling expression was outlined on Gu Xiaoxue's mouth. Tang Xiao began to walk while he also asked back, Ji Qimei has yet to have ID card. Don't you think that she can board her private jet and quickly rush with me to Star City? As Grand Master says. The smile on Gu Xiaoxue's face was getting thicker. She knew Ouyang Lulu's personality. She had long found and known that the spoiled little princess of the Ouyang family was very proud and had a sky-high pride, but her Grand Master was even able to tame her to be that docile. Was his charm that big? Or could he be the bane existence for Ouyang Lulu? A few minutes later, at the parking lot of the Everlasting Feast Hall, Ouyang Lulu's eyes opened wide as she stared with full of anger at Tang Xiao and shouted, What? You want me to be your coachwoman again? In your dreams. This great aunt has always been the one who commands others, and never once have I let others command me. Tang Xiao, even if you say that you want to lay bare the great heaven, I will not do what you want. Tang Xiao replied with a profound and meaningful tone, Lulu, I remember what you said before. We are friends. Shouldn't friends help each other? She doesn't have an ID card, and wanting to take a plane to Star City for her is an absolute nonsense. Otherwise, how about this time I, as a friend, sincerely asks you as my friend to rent your private jet? You. Ouyang Lulu did not expect that Tang Xiao would even use her words as a gun to strike at her. Her heart was full with unwillingness, but she was much more reluctant to lose Tang Xiao as a friend. Lacking other better options, she used her old trick again to struggle to get some of her face again, saying, helping you actually can be done. But what I like the most is listening to praises. I can arrange your flight immediately and even personally escort you to Star City if I feel good enough with your praises. Tang Xiao said, Lulu, you are one of a kind beauty and very beautiful, you have a good bearing and everyone loves you, just like seeing a blooming flower to behold. You, you have a Buddha heart. Now you can take us to Jingmen Island, right? Pfft. Gu Xiaoxue at the side could not help smiling as she made laughing sounds. Ouyang Lulu's mouth twitched a few times as she said with a scowling anger, Tang Xiao. You are intentionally doing this, aren't you? You think that I have a bad memory, don't you? And playing as a slippery guy to trick me? I still clearly remember. Those are the words of praises you have said to me before. And, those words are not bad. 
she finally said, those words are not bad. And saying that with a very heavy tone. Tang Xiao was silent. Gu Xiaoxue then opened her mouth and said, Lulu, please don't make things difficult for Grandmaster, would you? Besides, Elder Ji has important things to do with Grandmaster in Star City. Come on, help them, okay? Ouyang Lulu gave Tang Xiao a big supercilious look as she said with a snort, Humph, consider it done. I won't bicker with you this time as to give Xiao Xue some face. Let's just go now. In any case, I still have unfinished discussions with Chu Yi, so I've prepared to fly to Star City again, and bringing you along is just convenient. Thanks a lot. Tang Xiao nodded and said. It was already noon when Tang Xiao returned to Star City. He gave the blood spiral shell flower to Ji Chime from his villa in South Gate Town and left her to find Ouyang Lulu on her own. Then, he took a cab to go to the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital. He initially planned to go to Star City First High School early in the morning to report himself but decided to delay it. Moreover, since he was in Jingmen Island last night, he also missed the remedial plan for Yuan Chuling and the others. As he came to VIP ward, Tang Xiao looked at his mother who was about to eat her meal and asked, Mom, how's your body now? Do you still feel any pains or sores? Su Lingyun said with a smile, it doesn't hurt anymore. Xiao. Um. How did you come? You're not busy with the school classes? Tang Xiao said, actually, the curriculum at school has long been finished, and we're using the rest of the months for reviewing. My grades are quite good and I have mastered the contents in the textbook. Also, Teacher Han knows about your condition, so she thought that my study won't be delayed if I come out to the hospital to see you. Su Lingyun smiled and said, Mmm. Mom knows. Yesterday evening your teacher Han came here and also talked about your grades. She too raised her thumbs up for you. I know that my show, um, has a promising future. Ah, uh, right, have you eaten yet? Care to have a meal with your mom? Tang Xiao waved and said, I'm not hungry mom. Besides, I won't be long since I need to go back to school. I can eat later when I get there. Anyways, you said that teacher Han came? But I didn't tell her your ward's number. Su Lingyun said with a laugh, she should have asked around from the others. Whilst they were speaking, the VIP ward's door sounded as President Li Hongji was standing there with a full smiling face. He was holding a documents bag in his hand. Ah! Uh. President Li came. Please sit down quickly. Su Lingyun did not have much time to eat, and she quickly struggled, wanting to get up. Li Hongji quickly said, Please, you need not such ceremony. Just sit well. Anyway, Tang Xiao, I have successfully managed to get you the permit for your medical practice certificate. The health bureau's higher-ups were quite critical, though. But since I gave them my name as a guarantee, they happily gave their approval. Later on, you won't be just a doctor in a name but also in reality. So, when will you prepare to come and give medical service in our Chinese medical hospital? Tang Shi took the portfolio. Then, he took and read the certificate from the inside and said, Wait until I've finished taking my college entrance test first. Besides, mom probably won't agree if I have to give any medical services now. Chapter 144 Returning to School For Li Hongji, being able to hire Tang Xiao could be said to be already a good and happy occasion, a blessing that was bestowed by the heavens. He was quite satisfied after having gotten Tang Xiao's answer as he said with a nod, if anything, I've already prepared an office for you, and you can use it after you come. All right. Tang Xiao said. Li Hongji said with a smile, then, I'll no longer disturb you. Tang Xiao sent him off and asked his mother while holding the certificate portfolio, Mom, where are Bans Ho and the others? How come I haven't seen them? Su Lingyun said with a smile, I told them to go back. I'm a married woman here in this courtyard. 
it's quite improper if those big boys are to accompany me here every day. Besides, the hospital sends two nurses to take care of me and my needs every day. They are already enough. Tang Xiao released his spiritual sense and found that Banzhou and Dingzi were still around and stayed in the nearby corridor, which made him secretly feel satisfied. Then, he said, I got it. Since mom is all right, then I'll go back to school now. Well, Xiao. Um. You must study and review well. Do your best to pass the test to a famous university. Su Lingyun quickly spoke. What concerned her the most was her son's study and academic issues. Rest assured, mom. Tang Xiao gave his guarantee and smiled. Then, he left the hospital. At Star City First High School. Han Qingwu was sitting in her office with an angry expression all over her face. By now, Tang Xiao's leave of absence had been due, and it was time for him to go back to school. However, that fellow had yet to come to school today. She really could not figure out as to why he hated to stay at school. Even if his grades were good, but he should also understand the truth that the weapons should be wedded before going into battle, and even if the weapons were dull, it would also be able to shine. Um, teacher Han, you didn't have lunch? The other class's teacher in charge who came back to fetch his key, found Han Qingwu still in the room as he immediately smiled and asked her. I'm already full with anger. Han Qingwu replied with a foul mood. Huh? What's the matter? That teacher in charge was surprised. Han Qingwu knew that she was losing her manner when she spoke just now. She quickly said, it's not any important, it's just only one student. Teacher Lee, you're going to have a lunch, aren't you? I'll go to the cafeteria and meet you there later. All right. That teacher in charge could tell that Han Qingwu did not want to talk about this topic, so he immediately nodded and left. Knock, knock. A few minutes later, the office's door was knocked. Han Qingwu looked up toward the door. She instantly jumped from her working chair as she saw that it was Tang Xiao who stood outside. She suddenly walked toward him and fiercely shouted, Tang Xiao, are you still a student or not? We have obviously agreed that you have to attend the class today, no? And you just came now. Do you know you were absent from morning class? Tang Xiao helplessly said, Teacher Han, you're way too angry. Could you calm down and hear me out first? You can speak again after that, okay? Han Qingwu angrily replied, What? You still got things to spit out to justify your class skipping? Break your fingers and count for yourself. Since the last time you were hospitalized to present, how many times have you attended the class? Tang Xiao shook his head and said, Teacher Han, you put me in class 10 because you trusted me. Certainly, that's also because we have some mutual affections. Have I ever shamed you ever since I entered class 10? I did have very important things to take care of that made me unable to attend the classes. I know that I'll face the college entrance test soon, and I do know the priorities of the matters, which one is more important and which one is less important. Therefore, you don't need to always stress out that I was running away to ditch school. Han Qingwu angrily snapped, then, you used the trust one gave you, so you can indulge yourself? Tang Xiao emphasized, if I were to condone myself, I could have asked the school for my leave of absence. Moreover, even the principal would have no reason but to approve if he knew the reasons for my leave of absence. Your heart is shrouded with your anger right now. That I can understand. But I hope you put it down and hear me out for my explanation. Besides, you're the teacher in charge, the one who are responsible for the class. Shouldn't you have this kind of spirit and conduct? In her extreme anger, Han Qingwu was instead smiling as she pointed at Tang Xiao and said, Well, 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 since you said you got justified reasons, I'll hear you out. Do spit it out. Tang Xiao raised the portfolio of documents in his hand and slowly said, I'm too intelligent and studying is way too easy for me. So, 
I've been rummaging some medical books to pass the time. Sometime a while ago, when the school gave me a week of vacation, I went to Jingmen Island and accidentally saved someone due to circumstances. The person was a little girl with a strange illness, and that little girl's mother had taken her daughter to visit famous doctors everywhere. Even the president of Star City Chinese Medical Hospital was at a loss and was unable to cure her. During the time when my mother was hospitalized, the president of Chinese Medical Hospital, Li Hongji, knew the matter about me curing that little girl. He personally invited me, hoping that I would be able to work for the Chinese Medical Hospital. He even gave me extraordinary benefits for it. But since I have no intention to become a doctor for my future life, I declined and turned down his offer. Han Qingwu said with a sneer, you fabricated it, again and again. Tang Xiu forcefully handed the portfolio to Han Qingwu's as he said, whether you believe it or not, I did turn down his offer. But he did not give up and pleaded repeatedly. Finally, I gave him my word that I'll give medical services in the Chinese medical hospital after I attend the college entrance test. But you do know that hospital doctors need to apply and be tested to have their medical practice certificate. And this, this is the certificate he helped me to get. Han Qingwu opened the portfolio with a skeptical expression. But when she saw the seal on the certificate that was issued by the health bureau, a look of disbelief filled her eyes. You, is this certificate real? Tang Xiao took out his mobile phone and scrolled Li Hongji's number. Then, he handed it to Han Qingwu and said, This is the phone number of the Chinese Medical Hospital's president. If you don't believe it, you can call him now to confirm and verify my statement. In addition, if you have doubt about this number, you can look for his number through your contacts yourself to verify it whether it's the same or not. Han Qingwu looked at the phone number and was silent for a moment. Her furious smile and face slowly faded as she looked at Tang Xiao and said, I won't make any calls to verify it. I choose to believe you. I won't delve more further into your class ditching this time. But you are not to ask for any leave of absence again later and stay honestly at school to study and review your schoolwork. I promise. Tang Xiao said without hesitation. Han Qingwu asked, then your evenings. Tang Xiao said, two nights before, I have given Yuan Chuling and the others the remedial makeup for their lessons. I believe you've already asked them about that. If you think that I don't need to give them any more tutoring, I'll also comply to that naturally, so I won't have to leave and give them the tutoring at night. Han Qingwu said, I'll give you the vacation. She was not a fool. She did inquire about the result of Tang Xiao's private tutoring on the makeup lessons for Yuan Chuling and the other three students. The results made it hard for her to believe it, since the four of them praised Tang Xiao and stressed out that they benefited greatly from it. The class 10 that she was in charge was not the class for top students, and their academic performances were also only average in general. If Tang Xiao's remedial plan was really effective for them to face the college entrance test, maybe their scores would really improve by a lot. Tang Xiao took back the portfolio from Han Qingwu's hands and spoke with a rising tone, Teacher Han, I just told you that the Chinese Medical Hospital's president originally invited me to have lunch together, but since I refused, I have yet to have a meal, so I'm starving now. I'll leave you with your work as I'll go to the cafeteria to have lunch. I am coming too. Han Qingwu immediately said. Tang Xiao replied with confused expression, didn't classes just end? Shouldn't you have already had your lunch? Han Qingwu snapped at Tang Xiao and snorted, I was too full because of my anger for you, how could I have the mood to eat? But now after hearing your explanation, just say that I can accept those reason of yours, so my anger also has disappeared. Since I have yet to eat, don't tell me that I'm not hungry too. Eh, uh, Tang Xiao let out a forced smile and shook his head. Shortly after, Tang Xiao and Han Qingwu arrived at the school's cafeteria. And they suddenly became the focus of attention of countless teachers and students, causing quite the sensation. Heavens! Isn't that Tang Xiao? 
He has skipped school for so many days and he unexpectedly came to school today? How come the school hasn't kicked him out? This bad rotten apple? Man, I really want to punch that kid. He even lines up with teacher Han, and seeing that they brought their meal from the kitchen to the table, they should be having their lunch together, right? Damn, teacher Han is my goddess, how could she have lunch with Tang Xiao? Although Yuan Chuling and Cheng Yan Nan have spoken a lot of good things about him, but I still think that this kid isn't that good. And teacher Han is really blind to have lunch together with him. I'm so damn envious. This is too hateful. Teacher Han has never had any meal together with any men in the cafeteria. This damn brat unexpectedly has such a good fortune. This really makes me furious. How come it's not me having lunch together with Teacher Han? No matter in his previous life or in this life, for numerous times was Tang Xiao exposed and suffered from others' attention. Therefore, he just ignored those pairs of eyes with curiosity and anger. He looked behind him at Han Xingguo, who was busy carrying her meal from the kitchen to the table, and paid them. Naturally as it should be by rights, he chose to accept it. He just considered it that it was his compensation after she reprimanded him. Tang Xiao giddily sat at the opposite of Han Xingguo as at the same time he picked up the chopsticks and was about to eat, a lot of thoughts filled his mind. When he had only eaten half his meal, Yuan Chuling, Cheng Yan Nan, Xiao Wanfen, and Li Xiao Qian rushed in a hurry to the cafeteria. Whoops. I did wonder who could have such a good fortune to have lunch together with Teacher Han. And it turned out to be you, eldest brother. I did say that you might have come back. Anyways, we went to your house yesterday, but you unfortunately weren't there and we couldn't even get through your phone. So, about tonight, you won't ditch us again to be hanged dry under the sun, right? Yuan Chuling sat down next to Tang Xiao as he wrapped his hand around Tang Xiao's shoulder. Tang Xiao pushed his arm and lightly said, Yup, we'll continue our evening session. A bright light flashed from Cheng Yannan's eyes as she excitedly said, It's good then. We'll be there on time. And we've already prepared all the third year's textbooks this time. Tang Xiao nodded and said, got it. If you have no other things to say, you first go back to the classroom. I'll be back after having finished my lunch. Okay. Chang Yan Nan nodded. Seeing that Yuan Chuling looked like he was about to talk again, she pulled him directly and walked toward the outside of the cafeteria in big strides. Han Xingwu's eyebrows were raised as she slowly said, Wow, I didn't expect that you're quite welcomed and accepted. I hope that your tutoring to make up for their lessons is really effective. Chapter 145, A Nobody After finishing his lunch, Tang Xiao returned back to his classroom. Ten minutes before the first afternoon class began, Kong Xia called. She said that the recruitment for the company's staff had ended, and the overall framework organization for the company also had been completed. She also texted Tang Xiao the address of the rented building for the company office. Since it was very difficult for Tang Xiao to go out during the day, he told Kong Xia that he could only go out during the free time given by the school. After the call ended, the first thing he remembered in his mind was the issue with the healthcare products. He had the formula for the products. But if he wanted to manufacture those healthcare products, he needed to match those with traditional Chinese medicine ingredients as well as making the adjustment for the efficacy and effects. At present, it was not only Kong Xia who was waiting for the sample, but also Long Jinglin. After all, only after the initial stage product development had been completed could they begin to start the entire production lines. Either it was packaging, marketing, sales, and the rest of the plans. Tang Xiao spent the three afternoon classes with his mind wandering. His brain constantly calculated the proportion and estimation of the healthcare products formulas, the bottle capacity numbers, the would-be problems for the bottle packaging size and effects, and so on. Ring, ring, ring. Along with the end of the last afternoon class, Tang Xiao packed up his things and prepared to go to the building Kong Xia had rented for the magnificent Tang Corporation office. 
Although he had handed the authority to manage the company to Kong Xia, however, for whatever it is, he was the secret big boss behind Magnificent Tang Corporation. So it was unreasonable if he did not know about the company's location. Eldest brother, I'll go with you. I want to eat at your house. A trace of an evil smile hung on Yuan Chuling face as he spoke and let out a mischievous laughter. Tang Xiao snappily spoke to him, Hey, my house is not a restaurant, go to your house if you want to eat. Thickening his face, Yuan Chuling said, Who says your house is not a restaurant? You do know I've been there. Besides, your housekeeper. Ah. Uh. Who is it again? Ah. Uh. That elder sister Mu. Her cooking skill is really damn good. If I don't crave the meals she makes, I surely will have wronged my mouth and stomach. I am coming too. Chang Yan Nan, who had been hearing their conversation from the front row, turned around and said with a beaming smile. Tang Xiao let out a forced smile and said, You'll have to wait for me to take care of something. It will be quite a long time before I go home. Yuan Chuling replied with a puzzled expression, Where are you going eldest brother? Tang Xiao said, I'll go to the medicinal herbs market first, and to another place afterward. Yuan Chuling said, Eldest brother, why do I feel like that your whereabouts and actions are very mysterious recently? Could it be that have you done something big in secret? That's not good. I must go with you. I'm not afraid of not having any meals in the party, but having a meal while you are starving is much more appetizing. Yes, I get the same feeling. Chang Yen Nan added. Tang Xiao helplessly said, The two of you are just like the dogskin plasters. I get it. If you really want to follow me, then fine. But you must never tell even a soul about my business. I don't want anything to be spread out to other students. Fine. No problem. Cheng Yennan and Yuan Chuling answered at the same time. After leaving the school, Tang Xiao caught a cab as the three of them rushed to the Star City Medicinal Herbs Market. He bought a lot of medicinal ingredients according to the composition of the traditional Chinese medicine's formula and prescriptions for the healthcare products. Eldest brother, what are you buying so many medicinal herbs for? Are you gonna make some hot pot? Whilst carrying a big bag full of medicinal ingredients Tang Xiao had bought, he asked with a confused expression. Tang Xiao said, some are for the hot pot soup, and some are for other uses. Don't ask about this matter now, you'll know about this naturally later. Yuan Chuling flipped his eyelids and snapped, eh, eldest brother, you don't need to be that mysterious, okay? I could really be hooked by my curiosity, you know. For a moment, Tang Xiao was silent and slowly said, if you want to know the answer, then less asking, listen, and watch more. Only then will you get the answer. Anyway, it's late already. Let's go back now. Star City Oriental Gold Seat The place was the most prosperous business and commercial center in the entire Star City, and it was only a block away from Long's Dining Hall. The high-rise building had nearly 50 floors, and most of the major group companies rented offices here. Even if they did not set up their general headquarters here, they would also rent one floor as their branch offices. The magnificent Tang Corporation rented the 41st and 42nd floor for a two years, contract with each floor's area about 6,000 square meters. Whether it was the offices or the public working area of the office, they were exceptionally bright and spacious. Inside the elevator Yuan Chuling looked at Tang Xiao with a strange expression. His family also opened a branch office in this edifice. However, the subsidiary company was running a marketing business and not their core business. It was the advertising company which was set up by his mother. Eldest brother, where do you want to take us? After hesitating for a while, Yuan Chuling finally could not endure it anymore and asked. Tang Xiao secretly turned supercilious inside. Yuan Chuling was truly impatient and he knew that he would not be able to hold his curiosity and ask. 
But, Tang Xiao neither had the plan nor intention to explain, and faintly reminded him, Do you remember what I've said before? Less asking, listen and watch more. Yuan Chuling raised his middle finger to him, and then turned to the side with a twisted face. The elevator quickly rose to the 41st floor. When the elevator's door opened, the delicate and lovely Lolita Andy was waiting just outside with a smiling expression. The instant she saw Tang Xiao, she gave a 90-degree bow, vividly revealing the deep curve of her chest's big weapons through her wide-open collar. Hi, boss. Tang Xiao slowly nodded. He stepped out of the elevator and asked, Where's Kong Xia? With sparkling eyes, Andy gave out a shallow smile and said, Chief Kong is in her office. We've properly cleaned up and arranged this 41st floor, so we can use it temporarily. As for the 42nd floor, we've just started to clean it up. We'll be able to use it in the next few days. Tang Xiao said, I feel relieved that you've managed these things. The little smile on Andy's small face was getting thicker as she cheerfully replied, Thanks for the trust, boss. We'll definitely complete it. Tang Xiao did not speak again. As for Yuan Chuling, he stared at Andy with eyes opened wide as a saucer, and then looked at his eldest brother with his mouth opened wide and a shocked expression. He did not pay even the slightly attention to the dialogue between Tang Xiao and Andy. But Cheng Yannan actually could hear their words clearly. Boss? Tang Xiao was actually the boss here? Wasn't he obviously a high schooler? How come he suddenly became a boss in this place? With a look of disbelief, Cheng Yannan looked at Tang Xiao as a familiar name then emerged inside her mind, Kong Xia. Where have I heard that name before? Cheng Yannan slightly glanced to the side and found that Yuan Chuling was in a daze as he stared at Andy without even blinking. She immediately hit him with her elbow fiercely. When he finally sobered up, she asked in a whisper, Have you heard this Kong Xia name? What? Yuan Chuling asked back with a confused expression. Cheng Yan Nan gave him a big supercilious look before she whispered again, I said that Kong Xia name, have you heard about the name? It's somewhat quite familiar, I think. Yuan Chuling quickly swallowed his saliva as his eyes swept over Andy's body again. He shook his head and said, No. There are so many people with the same name. Actually, I haven't heard about that name. What is it? Is there something wrong? Pervert. With her keen observation, Chang Yan Nan could see to what direction Yuan Chuling's eyes stared at to. She grunted inside and spoke no longer. Inside the general manager's office. Kong Xia was sitting at her desk and looked at the documents in her hands. In front of her, Wei Zhongfeng was holding a stack of documents and said, As for the factory site, I've sent some people to survey it. On the list, there are three factories, one of which was a private workshop, while the other two belonged to a cosmetics company. From the survey results, I think that the private workshop is better than the other two. However, I haven't gone there to survey it myself on site, so I'm not sure about the details. Kong Xia said, I'll go there tomorrow personally. As for you, you have other tasks to do. Wei Zhongfeng asked with a puzzled expression, what tasks? Kong Xia said, although the boss has assigned you to the sales department as a front basic level sales staff, but we're precisely in need of more staff at present. So I think that the more capable people should do most work. Firstly, you are to help me manage something else. If the results of the investigation from those people I've sent are valid, there should be a silver orchid security company in the provincial capital. Whether it's credibility or ability, they are extraordinarily good. Tomorrow you'll go to this security company and conduct an on-site survey. If you think that they are good, you're to hire 20 security personnel from them. Wei Zhongfeng was puzzled and said, Hiring security personnel now? Kong Xia nodded and said, We will soon establish a factory, so the security issues are our top priority. During daytime when we're still here, we won't have to worry about anything. 
But when we leave at night and someone breaks into our office to steal our company's important data, then our actions later will turn extremely passive. Let me take care of this security issue. Tang Xiao's voice resounded from outside of the door. Shortly after, Tang Xiao with Andy behind him walked into the office, followed by Yuan Chuling and Cheng Yennan. Boss. Hi, boss. Kong Xia and Wei Zhongfen greeted. Tang Xiao waved his hand and saw that Kong Xia stood up from her desk. He bluntly sat on it and knocked on the table with his fingers, saying, Kong Xia is correct. The company's important and confidential data must not be stolen. And the most important for this issue is that we must have powerful security personnel. So, I'll handle those needed 20 security personnel. With an astonished expression, Kong Xiao asked, Boss, you can find people that are better than the Silver Orchid Security Company? Tang Xiao took out his mobile, dialed a number and asked, Xiao Xue, how is the security team of the Everlasting Feast Hall? Are they credible and trustworthy? Grandmaster, half of our restaurant's security personnel are experts who are trained by master. Although they are not people who take the cultivation path, however, their martial arts foundation is very deep. Each and every one of them is comparable with those of the martial art grandmasters. How many people do we have? Half of them are trained by master. As for the rest, they're trained by me. Send me twenty men. Have them rush to Star City tomorrow and wait in the villa area of South Gate Town. I've set up a company and need trustworthy security personnel. Understood. Tang Xiao hung the phone as he looked at Kong Xia and said, I'll send those security personnel to you tomorrow. Give me the current progress report of the company. Kong Xia looked at Tang Xiao deeply and said, Since we've solved the security personnel issue, we are now lacking a factory. We've investigated a dozen factories related to cosmetic businesses and finally have screened out three of them. I'm preparing to survey those three tomorrow personally, after which, I'll make the plan accordingly.